in darkness, everything is hidden. However, when we turn on the light, all is revealed. Jesus, he proclaimed that he is the light of the world. And in being the light of the world, Jesus said that he revealed all that was in darkness. So what was in darkness? Well, the way, the truth, and the life that was in darkness. And being the light of the world, Jesus, he revealed the way, he revealed the truth, and he revealed the light. The religious leaders, after hearing Jesus proclaim he is the light of the world, once again, they chose to challenge his authority and the divine truth. They said to Jesus, you bear witness of yourself, but your witness, it ain't true. They were telling Jesus, the only begotten son of God who came down from heaven, that what he was giving as his witness was not of the truth. Imagine telling Jesus that his witness was not true. Imagine doing that. Well, the religious leaders, they were doing just that. They had no idea what they was talking about, but they was turning around and they was telling Jesus, who again came down from heaven, they was telling Jesus that what his witness was of the divine truth, they were saying that his witness was not true. So to this, Jesus responded, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true, for I know where I came from and where I'm going. But you do not know where I come from or where I am going. So think about it. How in the world could the religious leaders tell Jesus about heaven and the divine truth when they had never been there themselves? And also when they had bent and twisted God's law out of shape. The religious leaders Jesus often called out as being hypocrites because they would say one thing and then they would go about doing another. Again, who are they? Who are the religious leaders to challenge Jesus, to question him on his authority and what was the divine truth? Dare I say for that matter, who are we? Who are we to challenge? Who are we to question God on what is the divine truth? I would tell you that we certainly aren't above God to be able to question him, to be able to challenge him on what is the divine truth. There's nothing wrong with questioning the divine truth. After all, that is exactly what I do. When I have questions, the Lord, he leads me, he guides me unto the divine truth through the Holy Spirit. So when you have questions and you desire to learn, you desire to understand, nothing wrong with asking questions. However, when we question the divine truth in order to create doubt, in order to disprove the divine truth, that is where we go wrong. We should not try to disprove the divine truth. What we should be doing is trying to understand the divine truth. We should be trying to learn the divine truth so that all of us can grow, so that all of us can mature as a being, as a person. The truth of the matter is that Jesus, he came from eternity. He came down from heaven. And in that, Jesus, he is the only begotten son of God. He's God in the flesh. He is holy. He is righteous, as he said, he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. Who are we, again, to challenge that? We either believe his divine truth or we reject his divine truth. In no way can our subjective truths and even our objective truths, in no way can they challenge the authority on what is divine, what is holy, and what is righteous. Jesus, he is that authority. So Jesus, he pointed this out to the religious leaders. He said to them there in the 15th through the 18th verse, you judge according to the flesh. Think about it, judging according to the flesh, I want you to understand is judging with a worldly mindset, judging with our subjective truths. Judging with our subjective truths, they rarely hold up to objective truths. Nonetheless, can they hold a candle to the divine truth? The religious leaders were questioning Jesus's witness. And Jesus, he said that if his witness, if it wasn't good enough for them, then he also had another witness, a witness that was in his father. When we have witnessed something and we want to share it with those who are around us, when we want them to believe us, guess what we'll do? We'll bring up someone who was with us. We'll bring some backup to also share in our witness so that those who are sharing a story with can believe us. That is exactly what Jesus was doing here. He had some backup. 
and he again brought this back up as his witness to prove exactly who he was. However, in the 19th through the 20th verse there, we'll see that the religious leaders, they looked around and they asked, well, where is your father? Let us remember, these were people that were out to disprove Jesus. Let us also remember that these were people who were of a worldly mindset. A few chapters earlier in the fifth chapter of John's gospel, Jesus, he had said that he had a fourfold witness to these same religious leaders, which was himself, his works, his father, and the word of God. So Jesus, he was, he was speaking spiritually and the religious leaders, they were of a carnal mind. They were of a worldly mindset. And so therefore they couldn't understand what Jesus was saying to them. As you have heard me say before, if you want to listen to God, if you want to understand what the Lord is saying to you, you must be of the same spirit. If you are of a carnal mind, if you are of a worldly mindset, you will never, I repeat, you will never understand what the Lord is saying to you. So our lesson closes out with Jesus once again saying, he is the light of the world. And again, as the light of the world, Jesus, he revealed the divine truth, which is again, the way, the truth, and the light. He was the only begotten son who the Lord gave to the world so that those who believe in him will not perish, but of course have everlasting life. Jesus, he said that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. And again, why is that? Because they should be abiding in his light. So what the Lord wants today is for everyone to walk in the light while we have the light. He does not want us to be overtaken by darkness. If we fall too deep into darkness, we may never see the light again. And again, God does not want that for anyone. So I say to you today that if you are a genuine believer, continue to walk in the light. And as you take on that light, that light will begin to reflect from all of you, for all of those that are around you. And again, if you are of darkness today, I would suggest to all of you, walk while you have the light, find the light. The light again is the way. It is the truth, it is the life, it is the divine truth, God's gospel. It came from Christ, it came from the Heavenly Father. So find that light, remain in that light, abide in that light. Mm -hmm.